Hi, my name's Kelly and I'm on the online prosperity show talking all about uh, supporting traumas and bringing them through to triumphs. Uh, there's modalities that has been created from a holistic perspective that will support you in your home to make these changes and empower you to be more vulnerable with yourself and to be more authentic and more true. So stay tuned and watch our new show coming through. Welcome to the Online Prosperity Show, and I'm your host, Prosper Taruvinga, and today I have a very special guest joining us. She's none other than Kelly Kingston. Kelly, how are you doing today? Uh, Prosper, I'm absolutely amazing and feeling better for being on your show. Fantastic. Well, the pleasure is all mine, and I really appreciate you taking us up on the offer to be on the show. Now, for those that are watching and haven't met Kelly, you know, I met Kelly five years ago, and uh, she really hasn't changed. And she is an international um, multi award winner for women in business, a global film producer author, speaker, mental wellness, and business educator. And she's also what they call an alternative frequency therapist. We're going to be talking about that, um, you know, later on. We were talking about Wi-Fi and how frequency actually affects uh, people. And she has, um, you know, ideas and ways to combat that, which we're going to be talking about. And there's so much more uh, that Kelly brings to the uh, table. But um, Kelly's journey of healing and self-discovery has equipped her with profound insights and wisdom, which she generously uh, shares with other women. And her compassion and willingness to help others makes her a very inspiring example of resilience, inner strength, and transformative power of compassion. Now, it's an honor to have, um, you know, Kelly on the show today and really dive deeper into what makes her herself and how she's helping other people within, um, you know, her space. Now, Kelly, we last spoke five years ago. Tell me what has been happening and, you know, what have you been working on that could actually, inspire, you know, interest our audience? Um, well, Prosper, so it's all a matter of juggling and balancing our lives. So being a mother and a wife and a, uh, a me, uh, trying to find yourself through these, uh, you know, the days, the weeks, the months and, and working it all through. Uh, so it, it, I, I believe that, uh, Back five years ago, I was still juggling all of that, but not knowing how to actually balance everything. So I was a little bit scattered and I was doing so much in so many different places. And now over those uh, five years and, and, and mainly in the last year and a half, two years, I've really managed to uh, pull it all under the one umbrella to be able to support uh, bringing my business into my home and creating the healing modalities that I create in uh, a wellness center environment and start with my family. And so once my family is calm, then everything else starts to then resonate at a frequency that I am comfortable with where I can then uh, manifest. And we're talking about manifestation before we actually started the show. And so uh, manifesting the people that you want in your life, the like-minded individuals to actually really set yourself up so that you can then actually start to thrive in your life absolutely and well congratulations mm -hmm. on that it does really seem like you've come full circle and you are already an inspiring and shining light to all the other women that you're helping along the way now in this time you did mention something um you know to the tune of bringing your business home does it mean your um you know you have completely eradicated what they call work life balance or how have you actually put that um you know to your advantage yeah so uh, that's a really beautiful question um so we actually homeschool so uh i believe lot uh, creating your own lifestyle uh is uh, a, a part of how you want to be sh showing up in life. Uh, 
when we homeschool, we actually don't do any homeschooling at home. So our homeschooling is within our community and we have four separate communities and we base our businesses and our homeschooling and our individual lives around that same platform. So uh, I've just yesterday opened up my uh, quantum uh, wellness centre Uh that aligns in with our business platform and our homeschooling platforms. So everything is, it just works. Absolutely. And I, I would love to know a little bit more, um, especially when it comes to that homeschooling uh, aspect. I can't even get my two girls to eat their own breakfast and it's for their own advantage. So wow. <laughs> let alone yeah. having the homeschool uh, set up there. How, how, how has that sort of, um, uh, you know, influenced the relationships that you have, especially with your immediate family and you say everything that you're doing revolves around some sort of a community? Yeah, so uh, so with the children, so what we actually had to do, because I have four children in total, I have a 22-year-old, a 19-year-old, a 14-year-old and an 8-year-old. So the first three were going, have gone through the traditional schooling um, platform and then my husband and I have chosen to homeschool our daughter and we soon found out that homeschooling from what we thought homeschooling was, was homeschooling your children at home, sitting down, doing math, English, science, blah, blah, blah. We're running businesses. We couldn't be doing that. So we then um, went into a community research base and we were tapping in and and connecting with other mums and dads and families about how can we homeschool. And then once we found out we have to unschool before you can actually homeschool, which is a different mindset and a heart set. So what we actually do is our homeschooling education platform is based around child-led education. So whatever our children are interested in is what we then step into and then we encourage and we motivate and inspire that space so that she then feels that she is no higher or lower than us as adults and we then give her power and choice to be able to go, okay, well, I think I want to do this today, but then then we'll just question her and then we'll go, okay, so what do you think that you can benefit and what growth do you think you'll get out of this by doing this for mummy and daddy to make that decision for you? And then she'll then go away or she'll have an answer for it straight away. And at the age of eight now, because we've encouraged that with her, she is like producing answers and her vocabulary is off the chart that we then even don't have to push her too much only to go to bed. Like bedtime is, and I know that's in nearly every single family, but during the day when she wakes up and has breakfast, she knows what she needs to do. And we've got everything written on a on a wall that is at her level that she can see um, and she just knows now. Absolutely. And that's such a beautiful gift to give, especially to our kids. And um, I might just veer off a little bit as a concerned parent. I really know that the current educational system is not really helping the kids, um, you know, prosper in, in, in ways that they possibly can, because they are just being taught to be obedient um, you know, people that would then maybe fill in job roles that will no longer exist, um, you know, due to AI moving forward. Whereas if we could actually uh, foster their talents and really help them ignite that which is um, inside of them, then they can be, do and have a happier existence. And I really appreciate that you are, you know, taking center stage um, in looking at that uh, for other people. But obviously, for the ones that are watching right now, this is, like you said, something that people have to unschool themselves. Um, you know, a lot of people are caught up in the expectations of a society. You work with people, um, you know, who are sort of like in the corporate uh, setting and, um, you know, you, you, you help them transition from the harsh and loving corporate world so they can move into a more natural life that nurtures and heals um, especially women what what does that mean and what does that entail 
Yeah. Okay. So uh, women that are searching, okay, so women that are in a job or in a position in the corporate world, whether they are uh, working for a large organization, whether they're working for a small organization or whether they're an entrepreneur and they're working for themselves, okay, they're in a position where they are at a turning point, they know that there's something that's coming. They don't know what that something is coming. Uh, they're nearly at that pivotal point of pivoting, but they're just, and I don't, I, I have to, and I'm going to use this word because I can't find another word. They're, they're feeling a little bit stuck in their life and they are procrastinating in doing stuff. They're putting stuff off because of the, the, uh, the, the energy alignment that they're actually in is not aligned with their with their heart values. So we're always evolving. And some days when we have a breakdown, we have a breakthrough. So the breakdown is necessary to be able to compensate the energies of the energies that are coming through to then support the awakening process of, oh, my gosh, I want more. What does that more look like? Who's, who's going to be supporting me with that? Where do I look? All those types of things come in. So for, for women in general, we support them in knowing that there's something else for them. They don't have to quit their job. They can, uh, they can look at different aspects of what they're looking for because we have a variety of um, platforms, services and products where they can then go, oh, my gosh, this is amazing, um, and then use that as a like a hobby-based business until they actually uh, get enough information, education, and then get themselves out into the community talking about what they actually love so that they then can get that part-time income coming in. And then once they actually step through that, if they choose to want to do that, then they have created enough income or enough sustenance for them and their families to be able to quit that corporate job if they so to choose to and then fully step into a holistic uh entrepreneurial journey that the 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 the, it, the opportunities are endless absolutely and i mean obviously truth be told you really have um done remarkable uh by just you know showing up and giving value to the people that you're going to be working with no in your answer you were talking mainly about maybe there will be a mindset sort of shift that needs to happen there and a, a heart set where people really need to uh, re really dwell into who they're becoming and you also alluded to something um, that you call the journey. Now, how do you then empower, um, you know, these conscious, strong women who desire more in their lives and want to fully step into their soul journey? Yeah. Yeah. So what we do is we stop and we listen first and foremost, uh, Prosper, because women have a, a story to tell. And if you don't stop and listen to their story and really support them from where they're at right here, right now, and be fully present with them, you will lose them, okay? So this is the most sensitive part of being uh, in a uh, authentic and um, respectful space to be able to open up the stage and place them on the stage. Like, you know, there's no hierarchy in this realm, okay? It's only the ego that allows the hierarchy to come through. And when you drop the ego and you stop and drop to your heart, that is the awakening journey process of coming back to yourself and being present and honouring yourself in the moment. Absolutely. And obviously with what you're talking about, it's it's not an easy thing to connect the the the, the brain and the heart because you have to go through the mobile phone, <laughs> you know, for that connection to happen. And we know that the mobile phone brings nothing but a bill, um, you know, for those that are really working towards that. Now, from your experience and the people that you're working with, because you're trying to get them to go from one 
aspect of their life which provides safety and recognition because when they're climbing up the corporate ladder they're recognized and you know they, they, they are you know seen as somebody who's achieving something now in your sort of experience what are some of the common challenges that uh, women face when they're trying to make such positive changes in their lives yeah so the safety um you know you brought that up yeah and women need to be, be feel safe right so um and uh they're comfortable in the safety okay so when you're feeling comfortable in safety that's a really um uh, that's a, a good place to be but when you're wanting to make changes and up level and and still be seen and know that you need to um, embrace your sole purpose journey of why you're actually really here and is your corporate job that purpose and you're making and you're questioning these aspects of yourself the I, I feel with the women that I've worked for in the past, they get their aha moment and they already know what they know. When you're a sounding board for the, the woman that you're talking to and you're listening and then you ask permission to ask a question and then you're then still giving them the authority, the space, the honouring, and then they're now then sitting back then questioning the question that you've asked them, that they're asking themselves now, eventually, okay, and this wasn't, and, and sometimes it happens really fast, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it happens. It happens when you're ready and when you're ready to accept that the penny drop the heart opens and you then go, oh, my gosh, this is it. This is it. This is what makes my heart sing. And I can actually then enhance my education. I then get to bring that into my own home. I get to, to support my whole family, my friends and my community. Then beyond my community is, you know, your state and then the, and, and then the world's your oyster. So when they can actually see the potential in that, then that is, there's no stopping them. But there's a roadmap to getting there and that's the four steps and that's them acknowledging that that they can actually step out of that corporate job and then step into something that they can co-create for themselves. The second one is recognising it recognizing that it's possible in their life to actually step in and take the first step. The third one is realizing with your real eyes that what you're actually seeing is something that lights you up and that sends you on your way. And the fourth one is the uh, the, um, the potential. Okay, when you close your eyes, you're bringing in that visualization and you might have been dreaming or visualizing this for, since you were a little girl or, you know, only in the last 12 months. It, it, it could be as long as it, it doesn't matter. But when you see that potential of freedom for yourself that you can actually still be in six to 12 months' time bringing in the same income slash sustenance for you and your family that you're doing in a corporate job, nine to five, nine till 12, nine to whatever hours, um, it's a no-brainer. I love this. I love this. Is this what you call the cycle when you're teaching mm -hmm. your your students? Um, so the cycle is a tool that okay. supports them getting from the, the mind into the heart to be able to then work through how they can bring in new modalities that supports them in raising their frequency on a day-to-day -day basis and giving them a pathway for a 42-day change your current life experience so that they're waking up and knowing how they can give themselves self-care, self-love on a daily basis for that time to embrace the change that needs to happen. Fantastic. I mean, with all of this, um, and thank you so much for sharing 
uh, the concept of the cycle and how it actually works with with all of this and especially looking at the type of people that you work with um there's a lot of emotion that really you know um affects uh people and being able to express your emotions is one of the most covert um things people just don't feel um well or you know and they don't show up in the best possible way you know how do you our emotions really affect our body and overall well-being um you know yeah this is one of my most favorite topics prosper so I'm just going to start this space with energy in motion equals emotion. Okay, so we place ourselves in situations from, uh, you know, from the first time we arrive earthside, uh, leaving our mother's womb to then embarking on this journey we called life. And then, you know, we have emotions uh, flourishing through us left, right and centre and that could be belief systems from our parents, religious uh, things, sporting, doctor, um, and that then gets laid on us as children. You know, your dad's a doctor, you now need to be a doctor. Your dad's a fireman or your mum's a this, that and the other and and that emotion, that heavy emotion is going... I need to aspire to be like my mum and my dad, but I don't think I can do that. And that's and, and so that's where it all starts, right, in the home. And so, so much pressure is placed on our children at such a young age when you say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you're saying this to a five-year-old or a six-year-old or a seven-year-old and they go, oh, I don't really know. Oh, I think you should be this. I think you're really good because you're, you know, you're in the sand pit and you're digging trucks and you're doing that. And they go, oh, oh. But that was just playing. Um, and and but the pressure on the children, they carry that throughout their whole life and go, well, my mum said that I needed to be this. And if I wasn't going to be that, then they would be disappointed in me. So there's disappointment straight away before they even grow to even really, 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 truly know what that actually really means. And so then we have the layer effect of emotions coming through and then we go to school and then that the, the layer of emotions placed on you. If you're not good at math, your teacher then comes in and says, oh, you know, you should know that by now. We've been doing this for six months and, and they go, well, I really just don't quite get it and I've asked you for help. Oh, just catch up and hurry up and stop this. And um and then and then they then feel like they're stupid because she's saying that in front of everybody and then everybody's laughing, going, hee, 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 hee. and then that's the shame and the guilt and the sadness. Okay. And so then these kids are living with these emotions. Now, these emotions are being placed on the children at such a young age, but nobody's showing them how to release these emotions, the emotional intelligence that is not taught to our children in schools so that they can actually accept this and then release that. And so what I've done within the cycle supports releasing the emotions that no longer serve us so that we can bring in the emotions that do serve us now so that we can release all the perceptions and the opinions and the judgments of others and know that all that no longer serves us because that's nothing to do with us. It was their opinion of themselves at that particular point in time for whatever reason necessary way back when. But what they do need is they need permission. People need permission to heal themselves because all their lives they have needed permission. Uh, I think I need to go to the doctors. Oh, yeah, okay, you need to go to the doctors because it's now time to go to the doctor. Um, or you need to go to school. Okay, you need permission to leave the school. Everything was based around permission, permission, permission. So when we get older, we then go, I need, I, I need permission. So the emotional aspects of identifying where the emotions are sitting in our body starts to affect our internal organs. And I'm just going to quickly share a couple with you. So fear affects our liver, okay? And people will go, oh, you know, if somebody's upset or angry or something, oh, they've got shit on the liver, right? That's an old saying. And then they go, well, where did you get that? The, the, the saying comes from being fearful 
holding that emotion in our liver and that's where we start to get psoriasis of the skin, skin disorders, uh, liver dysfunction and a whole heap of other things. So if we're not releasing those emotions coming out of those organs, you're going to have dysfunctions of the internal organs of our bodies. And until you actually then bring the awareness of how you can actually do that for our body, okay, that then supports mindfulness, emotional intelligence, the physicality, our spirituality, and our environment. Oh, I'm not too sure if I missed one out, but um, going through those processes. And another one, our lungs. Grief is the emotion that sits in and around our lungs. And so when you're grieving, it's short bursts of breath go. <laughs> and so you're not breathing properly through that process. So then we're having a dysfunction in the elementals of the lungs to be able to go, okay, so we just need you to slow your breath down, big deep breaths and 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 calm down. And nobody wants to be told to calm down when they're upset, right? But to be able to get them out of that state of uh, panic, grief, um, unsurety, and all those other aspects, we 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 need them to come back to themselves and and start to breathe properly. And as a human race in the twenty first century, we've forgotten how to breathe to how to breathe properly. Like you know, you watch a baby sleeping and their stomachs are rising. You watch us sleep and we're going. Mm, mm, Mm-hmm. and we're not breathing properly. And some people are breathing through their mouths when we're supposed to be breathing through our nose. Our mouths are supposed to be closed when we're actually sleeping. And so I could talk about this for days and days and days, but I've only got a short period of time. So our emotions affect our internal organs, all sorts of different internal organs, and that's in my latest book, Naked Skin Deep, um, Unleashing Issues in Your Tissues to Balance Your Masculine and Feminine Energies Within You. Fantastic. That was a question that warrants its own episode right there. But um, I really, you know, you caught my attention, especially with how um, you know, fear, uh, uh, you know, uh, affects the lungs. I mean, the the, the liver, and mm. you know, causes all those um, you know unseen damage inside. You know, and I've always known growing up that the cure for fear is um, alcohol, and it gives you a bit of Dutch courage. And then obviously, alcohol affects the liver. So I was just thinking to myself, maybe. That's um that's how that also uh connects and it just really works out like that. And and you you really mentioned a lot of things. And one thing that you mentioned is people are waiting for somebody to sort of give them permission. And mm-hmm. um that is something that I don't see a lot in especially in the first world, where in other cultures, um, I don't know if you've seen that uh, show with Hamish and Andy, and then they go to Brazil and then they actually get initiated by being beaten by uh, bull ants and that sort of then converts that person into manhood and I think in um, in, in Mexico they have uh, quinceaneras which also um, are for the girls especially to uh, tell them now that they are of age that now this is your permission to be an adult and um, while looking through your stuff I noticed that you have something of an initiation uh, you know for people that you're working with and it um, is a four-day holistic uh, retreat now could you maybe tell us a little bit more about it and you know what our participants um, can expect in in the work that you do. Yeah, absolutely. The retreats are something special. The retreats give give um, our guests a place to um, come back to themselves, give them permission to be authentic, to give them permission to be vulnerable, and to give them a permission to be able to just be, okay? And in the real world, sometimes you just don't get that opportunity. And so when they're there, we step into a place of stillness. Now, we we are never still, 
but we are stepping into stillness to be able to allow the processes, the visualizations, the energy, the intuitiveness and everything that is needed to happen on these four days to happen. And they are guided by a a, a formula that I've created like over many, many years of hosting retreats and conferences and summits and a whole heap of other things and working with some absolutely beautiful, epic people that we have uh, uh, brought in, collaborated minds, orchestrated a formula and it works. And it works beautifully and allows the, the, uh, our guests that are, uh, are attending our retreats to fully um, release past traumas, really step in and own their space in knowing exactly what they want. And nine times out of ten, Prosper, women come to me and they go, I know I love this but I'm too scared to do that. I'm too scared to step into that space. So what what we do as women, we support these other women to go, okay, so how do you feel you could get there? And then they go, I, I, all I need to do is this, this, and this. And I'm just like, well, okay, you already know how to do that. How do you, when, when do you think you could do that by? And then they said, well, uh, you know, I've got these bills and that, 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 and that. And so it's honestly, it's allowing them to permission to speak and and to really step in and take charge and 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 the I, I don't know it just gets really exciting when you see the transformation of the woman's face from when they arrive to when they when they leave uh, it, it's just mind it, it's just mind-boggling but it, it makes my heart sing everything that I do in every aspect I frigging love Absolutely. And um, how best can the people watching this um, take part in in these retreats? Yeah, so they can go to the Happy and Well Facebook page and um, there's links in the information areas and also events um, coming up in uh, on the events page or they can go to our website www.happyandwell.today. Fantastic. I'll make sure that all that information is in the show notes there. Now, you, you you touched upon something that is of essence, and a lot of people don't quite, um, you know, grasp the importance of taking ownership. Like you said, you know, people really have to take full responsibility, um, you know, for their actions and for everything else that they are doing why why is this important for individuals and especially women to start taking full responsibility for everything in their lives i mean giving an example that you have taken responsibility first of all for your income and then second of all for the education of your eight-year-old and other people just leave it to child care or other people just leave it to uh, whatever society or the system has in store for them and if you ask me the system is just giving um, safety nets, but so many people are using those safety nets as hammocks. Now, you know, getting back to that question, what, why is it important to take full responsibility for everything in your life? Yeah, uh, another beautiful question. Uh, so from my understanding and my own personal experiences and watching other women in my community and in my homeschooling community, uh, it's it's easy to have somebody tell us what to do and then blame them when it doesn't work out. Oh, she mentioned that I should do that and I did that and it didn't work. Um, I'm blaming her for wrecking the last three weeks of my life because I quit my job and I did this and I did that and it didn't work. Um, And so taking full responsibility means there's no blaming anybody else. Other people can support and advise and and give a opportunity for somebody to take full responsibility and embrace that space. But when you start to then, uh, and then that's the ego coming in too and not taking full responsibility and, and, and releasing the blame on somebody else, okay? Um, and that you know, is is coming back through childhood as well. And these are these are the um the elements that we need to eliminate in our lives 
to be able to then fully step in and take full responsibility for our lives so we we can stop blaming other people um, that are saying that or, or giving us uh, advice or opinions or just sharing oh here's a link in you know you could possibly tap into that and then they then go and do that but they may not be doing it well because they haven't been shown the elements of setting up a business or they might have not um, read all the educational videos around how to actually do that are they ticking all the boxes there's so many variables but that's the main thing Take full responsibility so that you can then stop blaming other people for your sickness, your not wellness, your jobs, your not having a car, not being able to pay for your fuel this week, not being able to go to that um, uh, weekend away with your friends, whatever it is, okay? So we don't blame anymore. We take action and then we take full responsibility of what that looks like so that we can then say, I did it and I did it my way and it worked. Fantastic. You know, while you're talking about that, I just remembered the words that my mom taught me growing up. It says, whenever you're seeking to, she said, um, whenever you're seeking to blame someone, obviously you're pointing at them with your finger. But if you look at your hand, one yeah. finger is the one that's pointing and you've got three that are pointing back at you <laughs> for you to actually take ownership. Now, for you, you've got a tool and, um, you know, we probably have enough tape for for us to to, to listen to you and build this uh, tool. Um, you, you have a particular song uh, that you love to sing um, that brings, um, you know, your, you know, you to start taking ownership of what's happening and yeah. you especially happiness and wellness. Could you share with us? And um, just in case somebody might actually see it as a good <laughs> snap or a pattern break for them to yeah. actually ha have a happier existence. Yeah, absolutely. I love this song. Um, I sang it to my children when they were growing up so that they could then really know that uh, that they could heal themselves and uh, and, and really step in and, and, and take back that ownership. Um, the song is called The Happy and Well Song and it goes a little bit like this. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. I'm so glad every little cell in my body is happy and well. I'm so glad every little cell in my body is happy and well. Oh, fantastic. I, I could feel that because all my cells were going, what, have we been called up? And <laughs> things of that nature. Now, finally, I mean, Kelly, as you can tell, you are multifaceted and you're a wealth of knowledge. I mean, you've won awards and you, you know, really have stood the test of time. You know what they say, a few businesses go past the three-year mark, you've gone past the five-year mark now, you're no longer a statistic and now you're doing your retreats and obviously I think, um, you know, you are probably going to be signed up to a record label anytime soon based on the singing that you just <laughs> told us right now. What, what What's next with Kelly? What can, um, you know, the people watching this right now uh, anticipate about what, what you're bringing to the table and how can they be really excited about um, you know, coming on board and working with you guys. Yeah, so what we've created is a a holistic platform to be able to support people in embracing uh, these new patterns and changes or habits that they want to bring into their lives. So we've created an online portal. We've created a healing hamper that supports that day-to-day -day space. But yesterday we opened our quantum wellness center. And so the, the, the that next step is uh, really um, stepping into the wellness center, supporting people, allowing people to acknowledge that they want to be able to step in and take full responsibility of that healing journey and educating them in taking the modalities into their homes. So, uh, and then, you know, in a couple of months time when we've got, you know, a, a lot of leverage and, and we've got the, the profit 
profitability, we'll be looking for investors and taking it out onto a property and uh, and really kind of nailing the quantum frequency of knowing how to heal yourself in your home. Fantastic. I uh, Even up until now, I'm still buzzing. I think that song really uh, deserves a lot of airtime. You know, every cell in my body is um singing now i could even feel my nails growing so that's how <laughs> how great um you know that experience has been and seriously that concludes our interview with um yourself kelly i really appreciate the time that you've taken uh and the knowledge and expertise that you have outlined in this episode today Thank you so much, Prosper, for uh, uh, giving me the opportunity to be here with you today um, on the online Prosper show. Uh, it has been an experience and a half, and I've truly enjoyed every moment. Oh, fantastic. Remember, this is still being recorded, so I'll definitely use that with our marketing. But <laughs> for those that are watching right now, you can see that Kelly um, you know, his commitment to empowering women from trauma to triumph is truly remarkable. And Kelly's expertise and unique approach to this whole holistic well-being, um, you know, has inspired countless individuals to reclaim their lives to find true happiness. If anything, just um, rewind back to just listen to that song that she sang and find, um, you know, the utmost responsibility that you need to be uh, taking for yourself there and if you want to learn more about uh what kelly is doing and her offerings be sure to uh visit um the happy and well academy i'll be putting all that information in the show notes uh below and remember the power to transform your life is within your reach so you want to stay tuned for more inspiring episodes on the online prosperity show and until next time this has been prosper and my fabulous guest kelly we're signing off right now. Take care and stay prosperous. Bye for now.